It is one of the greatest rivalries in sports. Alabama and Auburn clashing in the Iron Bowl, a rivalry that dates back to 1893. Games are wild, including last season's game. With just over a minute to play, Bryce Young and the Tide drove 97 yards to score the game-tying touchdown, forcing the first overtime game in Iron Bowl history. Alabama went on to win that game in four overtimes. No overtime needed today. First quarter, Bryce Young playing his final game at Bryant-Denny Stadium. We expect it to be his final game in Tuscaloosa. Rushes for a touchdown there to tie the game at seven. Then finds Jace McClellan. Touchdown tied. It's 14-7 Alabama. His 26th straight game with a passing touchdown. Second longest streak in the SEC since 2000. First play of the ensuing Auburn drive. Robbie Ashford pitches to Jarquez Hunter. Coughs it up after bumping into his own teammate. John Samuels Shanker. Crimson Tide recover. Oh, no, that's just that. That's just unfortunate. Alabama takes advantage. That leads to this. Roy Dell Williams marches in for the touchdown. Alabama up 21 to 7. 21 unanswered points in a span of six minutes and 30 seconds. Ensuing Tigers possession. Third and seven. Robbie Ashford connects with Javarius Johnson. Touchdown. Auburn down seven. Ashford second touchdown of the half. Look out. Cameraman staying strong in there. Ensuing Alabama possession. Crimson Tide just outside the red zone. Young to Ja'Cory Brooks. 32-yard touchdown. Wow, that was pretty, pretty awesome. That was in a tight window. Alabama up 28 to 14. Then things go from bad to worse for Auburn. Just under three minutes left in the half. Alabama punting from their own 17. James Burnett punts this just past midfield. Keontae Scott reaches for it. Appears to make contact. Alabama jumps on top of it. Yeah, he made contact right there. Play would be reviewed. Calls upheld. Interim coach Cadillac Williams, none too pleased. You got to hold on to the football. Ensuing Alabama possession. Young to Trayshawn Holden. He's gone. 27-yard touchdown. Let him do the rest. Alabama 35-14. to Fourth touchdown of the half for Young. 13-20. 264 passing yards. Four total touchdowns in the first half. Looking to put this one away. First drive of the second. Young avoids the pressure. His offensive line was awesome. Weaving through the defense. 14-yard pickup for the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Finished with 391 total yards. Crimson Tide taking advantage later in the drive. First and goal. Young hands it off to McClellan. Muscles his way in. Alabama 42 to 14. The over of 51 caches. Alabama's sixth touchdown in the last seven drives. Some spread drama late. Alabama 22 point favorite. Up 15 points with the ball in under two minutes left. Jameer Gibbs getting on in there. Scooting on in there. 23 yard touchdown. Alabama 49 27. After the extra point, it's a push. They want to win by that score. Quite the send-off for Young and the Crimson Tide senior class. Alabama earns its third straight win against Auburn in the Iron Bowl. Auburn finishes winless on the road for the first time since 2012 as Alabama completes another 10-win season. Their 15th straight 10-win season. Longest streak in college football history. That streak started in 2008. Nick Saban's second year in Tuscaloosa. Post-game, Jenny Dell with Saban and Bryce Young. Coach, many of your players just played in their final game here at Tuscaloosa. How significant was it to send them out with this Iron Bowl victory? Well, I'm so happy for our players. You know, they played hard in this game. You know, these guys did a good job of running the ball against us, but our guys competed. The offense did a great job. I'm so happy for our fans. You know, this is a big thing in Alabama. So winning the Iron Bowl was really something special. These guys won 10 games this year, which I think this is about the 15th year in a row. So I'm proud of them. I'm happy for them. I just can't say enough about what they've done to come back and win these last games after you know we had a disappointment. You talked about the guy right next to you Bryce Young Will Anderson they're generational type players. What kind of legacies have they created here at Alabama. Well he did a great job. I mean he's done a great job as a quarterback but he's done a great job as a person. He's done a great job as an ambassador for the university. I mean I just love this guy. All right, if the dominoes continue to fall in your way, do you think Alabama deserves to be in the college football playoffs? Well, you know, that's not for me to say. I love our team. I wish we had the opportunity, but, you know, we'll hope, hopefully we'll get one. We'll see. Thank you for your time, Coach. Thanks. All right, going over here, Bryce Young, how are you able to lead this team to such a strong Iron Bowl victory? Um, you know, this, this meant a lot to us uh, as a team. Again, it being the Iron Bowl, this is big in the state. It's big for us. We take a lot of pride in it. Um, but I just lean on the guys around me. Um, you know, those guys pick me up. I try to pick them up. Um, and we feed off each other. We play for each other. We show up at the facility for each other every day. And uh, it was just leaning on each other throughout the game. If you don't get the opportunity to play in the college football playoffs, is this the last time that we're going to be seeing you in an Alabama jersey? Uh, that 
that's not something I've thought about yet. Um, I, I just try to live in the moment, attack each day as I've been. Um, and right now, uh, we have the 24-hour rule, so I'm just happy we pulled this one out. <laughs> Something that I'm sure you have thought about is just how much that these fans mean to you. We do know that this is your last game here at Tuscaloosa this season. So what is your message to these fans? I'm, I'm eternally grateful. Um, you know, the fans, uh, me coming from across the country and, and everyone welcoming me with open arms, the support I get each and every day. Um, being out here, this environment is the best environment in college football. So uh, being able to play under these lights of Brian Denny has meant the world to me, and I'm, I'm forever indebted to Alabama. Congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Bryce Young, heck of a season, battled a shoulder injury, and what a career if indeed he foregoes his final season and enters the NFL draft. Uh, he's going to be playing on Sundays. Talented young man. Uh, past A.J. McCarron in this game for the second most total touchdowns in school history. McCarron had 80. Young now has 82. And he becomes the first Alabama player with two seasons of 3,000-plus passing yards Bryce Young, have yourself an Alabama career, kid. For restoring more than property, it is one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports. Alabama and Auburn clashing in the Iron Bowl, a rivalry that dates back to 1893. The games are wild, including last season's game with just over a minute to play. Bryce Young and the Tide driving 97 yards to score the game, tying touchdown, forcing the first overtime game in Iron Bowl history. Alabama went on to win that game in four overtimes. No overtime needed this year. It was all Alabama. End of the first half, Bryce Young to Trey Holden, 27-yard touchdown. Let him do the rest. Alabama took a 35-14 lead into halftime, and they go on to win it 49-27, to scoring touchdowns on six of their first eight drives. Bryce Young accounted for four of them, likely playing in his last game at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Alabama, another 10-win season as they'll come up short in the college football playoff, they would need some absolute chaos to get in. There's an outside shot, but it's pretty slim. Uh, Auburn, a seven loss season for the first time in a decade. Right, let's get back out to Tuscaloosa. Welcome in SEC on CBS lead analyst and former college and NFL quarterback Gary Danielson. Alabama having its way with Auburn on this night, scoring a touchdown on six of their first eight drives, Gary. Bryce Young accounted for four of them, likely played in his last game in Tuscaloosa. You've watched his career mature there in Tuscaloosa. What's number nine's legacy at Alabama? Wow. I mean, you know, quarterbacks at Alabama are expected to win national championships, and he just didn't put that feather in his cap. But the way he played, the way he led, I mean, for – his years here, I mean, Alabama was the team to beat. They just couldn't quite get over the hump. Last year was the injuries to the wide receivers late in the season. I think that really changed the football team. And when they played Georgia, they didn't have enough firepower. This year, I think that injury to Bryce Young really changed Alabama. They didn't get the work in their young receivers. I really believe they're playing their best football right now. But as you said, it may be a little late. A lot of stuff would have to happen for them to get into the big argument. You know what it takes to play in the National Football League. From what you've seen of Bryce Young, does he have what it takes to play at the next level? Oh, of course, of course. There's a lot of different sizes and shapes. But, you know, he has the anticipation, the quick feet. He doesn't get hit hard a lot because he can just feel the pass rush in a lot of different areas. He uh, understands defenses. We talked to Bill O'Brien, a former offensive coordinator for the New England Patriots when he had Tom Brady and, of course, a head coach. And he said he actually learned things from Bryce of how a quarterback thinks and what he looks at and how long he feels comfortable in the pocket before he has to make decisions. So, yeah, he's got a good package. Now, he does have to find a team that kind of builds around what he does well. Alabama built around him. They, they changed their style of offense. He likes to drop back. He likes to kind of read the defense. He doesn't like a lot of play-action pass. And to do, use him properly – they would have to sell out to him, much like Miami. The Dolphins have sold out finally to Tua, and Tua is finally finding his game in the NFL. Threw a touchdown in 26 straight games. Set an Alabama record for consecutive games with a passing touchdown. Had been tied from the man you just mentioned, Tua Tungavailoa. Meantime for Auburn, they lose seven games for the first time in 10 years, looking for a new head coach, uh, even with Cadillac Williams doing a very nice job here at the end of the season. Gary, what do you make right. of where the Auburn football program is right now? Well, I think it's in a lot better shape than a lot of people anticipated when the change was made from Brian Harson. I mean, 
you know, what they went through in the off season with all the rumors and what was going to happen, and you know, it looked it looked very divisive within the program. But I think Cadillac kind of brought them all together. They're all on the same page right now, and they're proud of their program. They're holding this recruiting class together. Cadillac has done a magnificent job. Everyone with that program owes them a debt of gratitude from now on. I don't know if he'll be the head coach. If you ask my opinion, I think they'll go a different direction long term and keep Cadillac in a position, associate head coach, pay him good money because he belongs to be with this program a long time. But, you know, the names have been batted around. It looks like Lane's not coming. But Hugh Freeze knows this league, and I think one of the decisions made about Auburn, well, they're not going to go out and get somebody that doesn't know the league. And it, it's hard to argue that Hugh Freeze doesn't deserve another chance at coaching in the SEC. Well, Alabama finishes the regular season 10-2. and two. You wrap up the regular season there in Tuscaloosa. Your next stop is Atlanta. Of course, you're going to go home in between. Reaction to the Iron Bowl, welcoming two-time Super Bowl champ Bryant McFadden and CBS Sports HQ college football analyst Barrett Salee. Barrett, I'll start with you, the Auburn alum here, uh, and what you saw from Alabama. If they don't lose two games this season, we always talk about woulda, coulda, shoulda, but this Alabama team playing well at the end of the season, this could be a team that's going to the playoff. Instead, probably not, but Bryce Young accounts for four of their touchdowns uh, as he likely plays his last game at Bryant-Denny. Yeah, Gary mentioned it, that Bryce Young's injury really derailed the entire season. It sort of sent them spinning their wheels trying to figure out how to compensate, not just for his absence, but also when he came back, what they asked him to do. But if they played like this all year long, they'd be in the conversation for the playoff. I think right now it's just a missed opportunity for Alabama, a product of some lousy circumstances, obviously. And, but I think right now you saw them play their complete game. Look, this offense is just absolutely filthy. It looked like Auburn had something going there early on. Bam, three straight touchdowns. Auburn scores once more. Nope, three, three more touchdowns. I mean, this is a quick strike offense. You saw why Bryce Young is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. It was a nice place for him to go out. In, in an Auburn game, in an Iron Bowl that was extremely competitive, he lit it up. He was the difference in this game, and he deserves a ton of credit. And this Alabama team, you know, yeah, they're not going to make the playoff. I think, like you mentioned, some really extraordinary circumstances would have to take place. But if that doesn't happen, I think... Uh, Bryce Young's career still should be celebrated for what he brought, not just to the program, but brought to the future of this program in terms of the attitude and the, the identity that he set forth. Yeah, Barrett, you talked about what Bryce Young meant to this team, especially when he was not in the lineup. And I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. But also, let's think about the individual standpoint as well. He's probably would have been the clear-cut favorite to win another Heisman back-to-back -back if he was fully healthy the entire season. Because when he is healthy, I still believe he's the best quarterback back in, in all of college football. We just saw that today. He's so cool. He's so uh, comfortable in the pocket. He goes through his progressions. He understands and he knows how to extend plays. And he just has a smooth release in getting the, the football to his pass catchers. And this team, they're much better with Bryce Young in the lineup. They're a championship caliber team in the lineup. They just unfortunately had a few slip-ups that won't, per, won't allow them to get to that moment uh, in, in the season. But yes, great career. Uh, I think he will probably be one of the top quarterbacks to, go, to, to, to be drafted uh, in this upcoming NFL draft, and I think he will have a heck of an NFL career as well. Barrett, obviously there's been a lot of chatter about who's going to Auburn to take over. They lose seven games for the first time in a decade. Cadillac Williams did a very nice job at the end of the season uh, refreshing their run game, which was nice to see when you got guys like Hunter and Tank Bigsby and you got a, a mobile quarterback in Robbie Ashford. But the state of this program right now is not where we really expected when Brian Harson took over. Hugh Freeze, a possible name here in the mix. We know Lane Kiffin, that he's out in terms of, of the job in, uh, in, in Auburn, Alabama. What's next here for Auburn? Where's the conversation go for this Auburn football program? Yeah, I mean, obviously it sounds like Hugh Freeze is going to be first on their list. We'll see what happens over the next 24, 48 hours. But I think Carnell Williams, the importance that he brought to this team over the last four games uh, should never be forgotten because obviously it's been a broken program really for the last year now since Brian Harson was almost overthrown last February. And what Carnell has done over this last month has brought the program back together. And, like, think about this. He's recruiting and winning recruiting battles without a staff in place. So I think, yeah, it was dysfunctional before, but it's almost like Harson's absence 
has made this thing functional again. So I fully anticipate him to be on the staff, whoever gets the job. I do think it'll be somebody with SEC ties. Obviously, Hugh Freeze has those. Lane Kiffin obviously has those as well. And I think there are a lot of other people around that can fill that role. But, I mean, Carnell Williams, when you look back, yeah, his record 2-2 two and two doesn't necessarily jump off the page. But I tell you what, he's going to go down in, in Auburn history as one of the more important figures in, in this program's history, knowing that he brought everybody back together from what was a completely dysfunctional relationship between the administration and the football program itself. Yeah, I, I just am curious yeah. if, 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 and BMAC, I'll let you jump in, why we think if it didn't work at Ole Miss, and I, I get it, he was he had to deal with all the, the stuff before him with Houston Nutt, I, I get that, but it, it didn't work out there. Why did, would it work, why would it work in, at Auburn where the expectation, look, I know the, the, the expectations of Ole Miss are high, but you're playing Alabama every year here at Auburn. I mean, this is that, to, playing a game like today, this is a game you expect your coach to go in and try to beat Nick Saban. We think that can happen. BMAC, you think that if Hugh Freeze is the answer, like that retread works? Well, clearly, you know, the, the powers that be at Auburn believe he is the answer. Now, let's keep it real. He had success at Ole Miss, I think. During his last campaign, they were like top five or something like that. You know, won, won like nine ball games and was able to do some nice things in the recruiting on, on the recruiting road as well. So if you factor in what Auburn is when it comes to tradition, prestige, and just the resources, they're ten times above Ole Miss in my opinion. So if you see, if if you felt like Hugh Freeze had significant success at Ole Miss not having the same resources that Auburn can provide, then one would think he would be able to do that plus more, especially when he gets his staff right there in town to be able to do what they've been called to do. So, I mean, when you look at the names that were surfacing in regards to this deal, Lane Kiffin, I think, was the number one name. I think Bill O'Brien name surfaced as well, Deion Sanders. But clearly, Hugh Freeze is the guy that they definitely believe can get their program and turn it back into the right direction. And I agree with Barrett. Cadillac Williams has to be on the staff. Yeah, I he, mean, he he is, he is Auburn football. Yep. The man went to Auburn, balled out. He's relatable. He can relate to the kids. And and, and as Barrett mentioned, it wasn't a drastic change in, in regards to wins and losses. But one thing Cadillac did provide when he became the interim head coach, energy, energy. And I started watching Auburn football differently because I saw a different energy and different vibe. And that starts and stops with the head coach, interim head coach, and Cadillac Williams. Yeah, and Barrett, you know the story, of course, very well, being an Auburn alum in terms of what happened with the money from Hugh Freeze's assistant, allegedly to Laramie Tunsil, all of that, right? Like just to set the context of this conversation for those that maybe forgot or, 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 or don't remember what happened. But like now, now we know that we have NIL, so that doesn't become a problem here. And so we just go, okay, Hugh Freeze will come on in, resurrect our program because it's not going to be a problem now. Is, is sort of that the thinking that with the recruiting now in a different era. Yeah, for sure. But if you go back and look at that old, those Ole Miss sanctions, really, he didn't even get, get caught doing an awful lot. He actually got fired because of the inappropriate calls from his school-issued cell phone. But, you know, when you look back at those sanctions, he was only going to get a two-game suspension. You know, that was going to be the punishment had he worked somewhere else in the SEC before 2018. So in the grand scheme of things, what they actually popped Ole Miss for wasn't that big of a deal. And like you said, in the age of NIL, there are far different ways you can work that. And, and look, I think going back to his Ole Miss days, I think there's this idea, well, he cheated. That's why they were successful. Go back and watch those Ole Miss teams. From a talent perspective, they are nowhere close to what Alabama, LSU, Auburn at the time were. So he's a good coach. He understands the landscape. And I think he'll do a great job at Auburn if he does, in fact, get that job. But uh, in, in terms of the financial aspects of this, yeah, it's a different age, and he certainly can take advantage of it. Well, Hugh Freeze said he's still waiting for that offer from Auburn. So we will wait to see in terms of what happens next. All right, time now for the SEC on CBS Player of the Game presented by Belfour. And, and BMAC, I, I'm giving it to Bryce Young. Who, who you got? I'm right there with you. I'm giving it to Bryce Young. Uh, 20 of 30, 343 yards, three touchdowns, uh, just an outstanding performance. And did you expect anything outside of just seeing Bryce Young ball out in his final game there in Alabama? No, I, this is what I expected to see. He delivered big time and hats off to an outstanding career, for having an outstanding career there as a starting quarterback with the Crimson Tide. So I'm going to break the rules. I'm going to not say player of the game. I'm going to say players of the game. And those are the five dudes up front on the Alabama offensive line. Zero. Zero sacks. 
that Bryce Young took, which is a complete 180 from where this offensive line has been really for the last two years. And it wasn't just that he wasn't sacked. The dude had time to take a nap, wake back up, have some coffee, maybe read the newspaper, and then find his receivers deep downfield. That offensive line was absolutely phenomenal for Bryce Young today. And granted, yes, he had a great game. But without that offensive line, he would not have had as much success today as he did. Uh, I mean, it was, it was really impressive by that offensive line. Alabama's now won the last three meetings in the series, so they've got the bragging rights in the state of Alabama for at least another year. And, and in a couple years, Barrett, we're going to have expansion. We're going to have college football playoff expansion. And this is where I would argue I want another look at Alabama this season. I would say I want to see Alabama in the college football playoff. In a 12-team landscape, they're in. I'm getting another look. They get a redo. So that's why, we make the, that's why I make the argument for expansion. I know Josh Pate is, is saying blasphemous things right now if he were to watch this. But this is where the conversation takes us is you get a second look. Like, hey, they stumbled the regular season. Let's give another chance in the playoffs, see what they could do. Well, that is blasphemy. That is blasphemy, Hakeem. Why, <laughs> why should they get a second shot? Why should they get a second shot? They already lost two games. Georgia hadn't lost any. TCU hadn't lost any. Just saying, look, if you like and, access, fine. I like excellence throughout the course of the season. And, and you're right, Barrett. Why should they get a second shot? It's safe to say they got a second shot because remember when they sustained that first loss, they still had a great realistic chance to make the playoffs. Most teams can't say that in college football. For most teams, if you're not undefeated, if you don't win your conference, you don't have any, any chance to make the playoffs. But because of Alabama and who they are and the tra tra tradition and the prestige, they still have a great chance of making the playoffs with one loss. So they knew exactly what they needed to do. They didn't do it. So I am right there with Barrett. No, 12 teams, they need a, another chance. They had, a, they had a second chance, and they just didn't take advantage of it. Okay. I'm just, I, I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Just get, say get, no get, to expansion. Get, I've get given us. up, Akeem. You know this. Oh, like, I, I'm aware of that. It's a political stance. I've, I've, I've conceded the election. <laughs> You're right. I'm still – you win, but I'm right. And so is BMAC. I, I think we're all going to win in a couple years. I think we're all going to win because I think there's going to be some entertaining situations or we'll be back where we started. Just give me the BCS. It's, e it's right. It's either going to be yes. that or just take me back. <laughs> yes. Hey, it's just going to be that. that. Like, that's right. It's going to be the ex you one extreme or the other. Or just we won't even play the game. We'll just we'll, the writers will name a national champion. No one wants that. <laughs> Y'all don't want me doing that. <laughs> no, nobody, nobody wants that. I picked Ohio State to win the national championship. And look how uh, – that's a low blow, Hakeem. I'm sorry. Mm. I didn't mean that. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of did. Yeah, they ain't winning the national championship, at least not this year. <laughs> BMAC, Barrett, appreciate it as always. Great stuff from you guys throughout the regular season on HQ as, uh, well, we got conference championship Saturday coming up next Saturday. We'll have you here as uh, – it's going to be – it's going to be wild. LSU trying to knock off Georgia. Ooh, that could be, that could be wild. It'll be on CBS 3.30 Eastern. Men, thank you. Yep. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.